First question on this episode came from my guy John. He said, Hey, Graven, this is probably what you don't want to hear right now, but it doesn't seem like the Ravens can keep Lamar and Roquan without a serious overpay. So I think it's in everyone's best interest for the Ravens to pull a Packers with a franchise tag and trade for Lamar. So my question is, if the Ravens decided to go down this path, which QB would you like them to draft? Whoa, you already talking draft. Hold up there, buddy. Wait a minute. You already talking about the we in what week 17 week 17 ain't even start yet well maybe by the time you see this video i think the cowboys play they play the titans i think but anyway ravens ain't even get to their week 17 game yet you talking draft playoffs ain't even start whoa it's it's too early to be talking draft or or is it let's see what else you had to say he said so my question is, if the Ravens decided to go down this path, which QB would you like them to draft? I personally like the idea of Will, I want to say Levi's. I want to say Levi's. I'm thinking about the jeans and whatnot, and I ain't never seen nobody with this late last name. I, I, I just, I can't see it being Levis, but hey, who I don't know. Because again, y'all know I don't watch college. The only time I really start watching college, if it's there's some prospects that I start looking at during draft season, and then I watch a bunch of stuff on them, but... So anyway, whatever his name is, y'all know who I'm talking about. Bryce Young, I've heard a million things about him. Um, or Max Duggan, in no particular order. Uh, C.J. Stroud is too much of a pocket passer, and the Ravens need someone with some mobility to make the transition easier from Lamar. I hope it doesn't come down to this, but I'm looking at it from all angles. And yeah, that's what you got to do, unfortunately. You got to think about all the possible possibilities. Um... And that's that's the unfortunate truth right there. Uh, but I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you right now. I, I, I couldn't tell you right now. I, I really do hope that we don't have to think about it or go down that road. But you just never know in this day and age of the NFL. The fabled King's Ransom. Next question came from my guy, AJ. He said, hey, great. I wanted to start off first by saying, hope you and your family are doing great. I wanted to ask, what's in, what in your mind would be an adequate trade package for Lamar? One that the Ravens would decline because they would show him his money. That would be an adequate trade package for Mr. Lamar Jackson. But anyway, continuing, he said, uh, all fellow fans keep talking about Lamar going somewhere else, but no one's talking about what kind of King's Ransom deal a team would need to give the Ravens for them to trade him because the Ravens are not. He put not in all caps. That's why I said it like that. Ravens are not. Gonna let Lamar walk for free. If a team like Miami wants him so bad, I think two first-round picks, two second-round picks, and Jalen Waddle would be fair compensation for a QB that a lot of folks say is worth the 260 mil plus fully guaranteed. I don't think the Dolphins would give up Jalen Waddle too for Lamar. Um, I think if it, I mean if it came down to it, and he had to be part of like two firsts and two seconds and a former first-round pick, who's nice? Jalen Waddle's nice. <laughs> that boy is nice. Um, but to, I, I don't think they would include him because that that's that's a lot. But at the same time, it is Lamar Jackson. Um, so definitely multiple first round picks, multiple second round picks, and then um, if they could get like for Ravens, uh, well, I, I was gonna say we'll see. Hopefully, we don't see, but we'll we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, definitely multiple picks in the first couple of rounds. Definitely multiple picks in the first round. Multiple picks in the second round. Possibly even multiple picks in the third round too. Um, if the Ravens do trade Lamar, uh, it ain't gonna be cheap. I, I, I tell you that much. And then Ray, Ravens, like you know, like you know how they get with draft picks. But the, the Ravens' eyes light up when it comes to draft picks. Uh, but anyway, um, he said, uh, if teams are willing to move heaven and earth for Lamar, then they should have no problem paying heaven and earth for him either. Yeah, certainly. If a team's willing to give up everything for Lamar, then they're going to definitely be willing to give him the money. Next question, Will. Looks like more so a comment came from my guy, Will, and this is his thoughts on the Ravens and Falcons game. He said, the, it was an okay game. The running game was pretty good. The defense was good, but the passing game still needs a lot of improvements. Uh, our receivers seem to not be able to get open, and that's a huge problem for us because once we're in the playoffs, teams are going to try to take away our run game. So, still a lot of work to do. Looking like we might clinch a playoff spot. Oh, well, we certainly did. Uh, but that's what that's what we need, and we need Lamar back ASAP. 
P.S. Thanks for the shout out on the last video. Glad you got my email in time. LOL. Appreciate it, Will. Ravens, Ravens, Ravens. Next question came from my guy, Colin. He said, Hey, Raven, hope the family is doing well. I was thinking today, if we brought Sean Payton in as head coach, uh, we would not sign G Row for OC, and I would offer the OC job to Hobbs. And if he says no, we would go get a guy. And if he says yes, then that's great. Hobbs ain't about to be no offensive. You, 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 <laughs> Hobbs ain't about to be nobody offensive coordinator. One, he ain't no offensive coordinator. He don't call plays like that. But two, if, if Harms got fired, he gonna go get another job somewhere as a head coach. He definitely gonna go go get another job somewhere as a head coach. Harms <laughs> ain't about to. Harms is not about to sit here, watch the Ravens bring in another coach, and then coach under that. Co oh no, <laughs> I, that that would that would be like that would be a slap in the face. That'd be so disrespectful. Uh, you know he wouldn't go for that at all, man. Uh, and and Ravens, Ravens wouldn't do that. But anyway, uh, he says so. If we had Peyton for head coach, we wouldn't be so we wouldn't be as conservative of a team. We would do more RPOs and pass plays that would open up the run game and the passing game for us, and we wouldn't have Lamar on the run as much, uh, as well for less injuries. This is an idea for me, and hope you like it. Just like Greg Roman, I'm out. Yeah, and, and Harbaugh will be too if you try to pitch that to him. Shout out to my guy Colin. That that, that was a funny one. I like that one. But anyway, next question came from my guy Eric. He said, Lamar Leverage. What's up, bro? Hope you and the family are doing well. Oh, we're doing really great. I appreciate it. Do you feel like Lamar has some leverage right now? I feel this way because the organization knows what the team looks like with Lamar and without Lamar. You play to win, and clearly, Lamar gives the Ravens the best chances to win the trophy. He could go into EDC's office and almost control the conversation. Looking forward to your thoughts. I'm active duty Navy and your videos keep me going every day. Serving the country. Take care and go Navy. Appreciate it, Eric. Thank you, man. Um, with Lamar, th does he have leverage? Well, certainly the, he he let the let the team know, like, hey, y'all know who I am. Y'all know what I'm about. Y'all, y'all know me. Um, but the Ravens, they are because it's business. Lamar, he going to use everything in his power to show the Ravens like, hey, this is why I need to make X, Y, and Z. Ravens are going to show him everything in their power. And one thing that they're going to use right now is the injuries. The time that he's missed. They are going to try to use that to, well, first off, that's if they even re-enter negotiations with Lamar. Because, see, to, to, to talk about all this stuff, to have the back and forth, to, to pitch an offer and go back and forth on a contract, on negotiations, you got to be in negotiations first. So if if the Ravens and Lamar Jackson get back to that, then they can both use what they got against each other and just go blow for blow. Because that, that's what it's going to be if they get back to negotiations. Well, ho hopefully they will, but we'll see how things shake themselves out. But does Lamar have leverage? Yeah, he has some leverage. Ravens got some leverage. Lamar got some leverage. Uh, both of them got some different leverages on each other. Um, I think with Ravens, they would definitely definitely would go to the injury part. Definitely would go there. Um, then they would go to his passing numbers too. They would go to the they would go to the stats because the stats, especially like this year, it ain't been so pretty. Lamar, he can go to the win. Oh, and the Ravens because they could be like, oh, look at the playoffs too. Uh, Lamar, he can go to the wins. He can go to the success that the team has had with him uh, and the success that they haven't had without him. And he'd be like, look, look, look what I've done with what you've given me. You ain't, you ain't even giving me anything, anything great. Like, and look at all these other quarterbacks. I love, like, I think, um, I think it was Swagoo. Oh, what's his name again? Marcus Spears. He said it the best. He was like with, with Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts right now got A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. I uh, got a bunch of Evans, Dallas uh, Goddard and uh, Miles Sanders. And uh, he got some more too. But they loaded over there. And I'm happy for Jalen Hurts. He's doing his thing. He said Jalen Hurts right now, uh, even though he missed the last game due to injury, he'll be fine though. Um, he's in MVP conversation. And the Eagles did a great job of putting him in that conversation by really loading that team up. But so Lamar, he hasn't even had half of the guys that Jalen Hurts got, and he won an MVP. And you look what he did it with. Look what he did it with. And look how he has continuously been asked to do so much, always the leading passer and the leading rusher every year, every year, without fail, every year. 
So, yeah, to answer your question, yes. Uh, when you really think about it, Lamar does have a lot of leverage. Now, with all that being said, how can we forget to do the intro? Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Question from Subs, where y'all can ask any question you want to and we answer in a video like this. Now, if you want to be part of it, for all the Team Keep It Clean patrons, the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Uh, don't send an email, send it directly on Patreon, but for everybody else, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Don't send it anywhere else, so your question will not be answered. It will go straight to the trash if it's sent to any other email. So you send it to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, and hopefully your question will be a part of it. But anyway... Next question came from my guy Reese from Texas, but originally from B More. Hope you and your family are doing well and enjoying life as well for the rest of the team. Keep it clean, folk. I appreciate that. Thank you. I think we are plain old unfortunate in the injury area. Last year, mostly defense. This year, mostly offense. We took an unfortunate turn of events the past month. We get Gus and JK back. Now we lose Lamar. Duvernay. Bateman also, I know it was earlier in the season. Now we have this depleted wide receiver core and very suspect play calling from Roman. I mean, you're saying we, now we got a depleted wide receiver core. I said we got a depleted wide receiver core before the season even started. But anyway, let's keep, let's keep going. He said, I don't see Harbaugh going anywhere. He's not. Harbaugh is as safe as it gets. Again, Harbaugh, how you know Harbaugh's safe? Like, with this team, with all the issues that they done had, even all the different injuries that they done had, this player leaving, coming back, this player leaving, coming back, this player leaving and staying out, this player leaving and staying out, all that stuff, they have a playoff spot with two games left. And on top of that, they have an opportunity to win their division. They're not out of it. And, and, and they don't need anybody's help to win their division. Ravens don't need any. All the Ravens got to do is win their, their last two games. If they win these next two games. They win a division. Harbaugh is safe. And I mean, you can understand why that, that he's safe. But anyway, uh, he said our situation really <laughs> he said our situation really sucks because everything else is in order. Offensive line check, tight ends check, running back check, defense check. It really complicates things with this contract issue with Lamar. There are too many what ifs out there. What if we had a big play wide receiver? What if Bateman wasn't seriously hurt? What if we fired Roman earlier and so on? There are a lot of what if questions out there. Um, the contract part, that's both on Ravens and Lamar because it would take both sides to agree. But this other stuff, that's all on the Ravens, especially the what if situation at what the wide receiver position. Ravens have nobody to blame but themselves for that one. But anyway, continuing. He said, I don't know what happens next year with Lamar in this organization, but if he walks, I see a ridiculous overhaul on offense and more of maybe just making it to the playoffs. I don't know about you, but I'll never forget our QB carousel. Kyle Bola, Case, uh, Elvis Gerbach. Uh, oh, Chris Redman. You brought up Chris Redman. I remember him. Uh, make it make sense, Ravens. And for people saying Lamar is injury prone or his style won't last long in the NFL, miss me with that and look at Bateman and how Lamar got injured in the first place. Anyway, go Ravens. Sorry for the lengthy rant. And what are your thoughts? I'm an idiot sending this to the wrong email. I'm a little out of it. Still trying to get over COVID. Peace out, sir. No, you're good. You, you sent it to the right email. So you, you are good, my friend. I appreciate you. Um, I, uh, well, I know you said let him walk. You, you know, they, they, not, they wouldn't let him walk. They would... The, the, the least they would do would be to tag and trade. Um, but, yeah, you, uh, you, you got a special quarterback, um, and especially with the Ravens. Like, you would think every – people always talk about how experience is the best teacher. You would think with the Ravens' experience that it would be a great teacher to them. But after everything that, they, that they've been – I can't even talk. After everything they've been through at the quarterback position, you would think, all right, hey, Ra yeah, Ravens going to take care of this, right? Right? They they have to, right? They 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 got it, right? But we'll see. We'll see. They got time. There's time left. He's not a free agent now. The season ain't even over yet. So they got time to write this. They got time to fix it. But again, like we said, it, it does take two. It will take both the Ravens and Lamar. 
I, I just hope that they're not at a point where it's no looking back, where it's no turning back, I mean. But if it's there, then we'll just see how the offseason goes. And the last question on this episode came from my guy, BB. He said, hey, hope you and your family are having a great and blessed time now. What would Ravens have to do to get over the hump on being a more attractive place to sign a much needed number one wide receiver? I think moving on from Hobbs is imperative for this organization to evolve. What are your thoughts? Thanks for the channel. And hopefully, like the coaching staff and Charm City is after this season, I'm out. And he said, hashtag team keep it clean and hashtag sign Jerry Judy. Um, shout out to Jerry Judy, by the way. Um, what would it take for the Ravens to be a more attractive place to sign a much needed wide receiver one? Um, it would take a, a change in their philosophy, a change to their approach to the position. And I think in order for them to do it, they would, a couple of things. Um, they would have to overpay. Um, and depending on who it would be, depending on how you acquired them or whatnot, you may have to give up a little more. Uh, but if it, if it's a free agent, you're definitely going to have to give up more than other teams because those number, if there's a true number one wide receiver, if they looking at you, uh, looking at your team, look, they looking at other teams and they looking at the Ravens. And if they thinking about winning, like, hey, I could really help them get over the top. All right, cool. But if they think about numbers, they think about catches, they think about consistent impact, they're going to look at the Ravens and be like, mm, I don't know about that one. So they would just have to do an overhaul in that uh, they were, as far as the philosophy when it comes to wide receivers in the first place, not even just the scheme. The scheme is up next, but first with their, their philosophy on just signing and going after those guys at the wide receiver position. But next, along with them having to overpay if it was a free agent uh, or just really having to go against what they normally do and go trade for somebody, however they acquire one, they had to get one. But then uh, more importantly, um, or just as important as that would be the scheme. It will be the scheme. Um, you would really have to show people, like, and see, that's where it gets tricky because, say, for instance, the Ravens got a new offensive coordinator. Just because they bring in a new offensive coordinator next year, it doesn't mean that the receivers are going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 I, I, I want to go there. No. I think it could be even harder because – People know who you are. People know what you love to do as a, as a team, as an offense and whatnot. So you're going to have to show them. I think the Ravens would have to go through a process where they showed uh, the league like, hey, look, we, this is what we're doing now. All right, wide receivers, come on through. Come on down. So you would have to go through that process of really showing them your growth. Uh, so that's what I think it would take uh, for them to really be a more attractive place for number one guys. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.